In this lesson, we are going to make two different geometric patterns. We'll start with the triangles and make a pretty simple pattern with them first. Then we'll use our circles and asterisks to make another geometric pattern that feels modern and unique. We can do all of this with just a few simple tools in Photoshop. All right, let's dive in with the geometrics first. All right, I'm going to start by making a new document. So file, new. So 10,000 pixels, make sure it's pixels, not inches, otherwise that would be huge, by 10,000 at 300 PPI and RGB looks great. So create. Awesome. So this will be my pattern artboard. So I'm just going to pull it over to the side and select all three of these elements and pull them in one by one. And remember for this one, I'm just going to be working with the triangles. And first things first, I'm going to select all three of my triangle layers. I'm going to make sure that they are aligned on a horizontal center as well as on a vertical center. Cool. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. And now it's just coming up with a cool composition for this pattern. I think what I want to do is have this dark green piece be a little bit behind everything else. So I'm just going to click it and drag it to the back and maybe raise it up a little bit and then have this blue one kind of overlapping the green a little bit and then use my turquoise and flip it around. So I'm going to use transform that's command T and holding down shift. I'm going to turn it until it is pretty much upside down and bring it down a little lower. That feels pretty good and press enter. So before you start repeating these shapes into a geometric pattern, I want to make a few slight color adjustments. It's easier to do that now before we start repeating everything because right now there's only three layers. So I want this turquoise to be a lot more desaturated. So I'm going to go to image, adjustments, hue, saturation, and I'm going to bring down the saturation and then bring up the lightness so it feels more like a, like a minty green. And I'll go ahead and press OK. And then I want this blue to feel even more saturated. So just a shortcut to get to hue and saturation. You can also do Command U on your keyboard. And for this, I'm going to bring up the saturation and adjust that hue a little bit to be a tad bit more green. And press OK. And then I want this last green piece to be more desaturated. So same thing with that layer selected. I'm going to go to Command U and bring down that saturation. I'm also going to bring down the lightness so it's a little bit darker. Cool. I like the way that's feeling. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Um, yeah, I kind of like this arrangement and I want to see what this looks like if I start repeating it over and over again. So I'm going to select all three of these guys group them together by pressing Command G, and then using my transform tool, Command T, I'm just gonna pull this into the center of the page and then let those pink lines tell me what the exact center is. So perfect. And press Enter to set the transformation. And now it's just a matter of me repeating this into a geometric pattern. So I'm going to copy that group by doing Command J, and then using my transform tool, Command T, I'm going to pull it up, drop it right about there, and then press enter. And I'll do the same thing. I'll copy that group again, command J, use my transform tool to pull it down, and press enter. Awesome. And I'm going to make them a little bit smaller, also using my transform tool. Perfect. Now, just to stay extra organized, I'm going to group all of my groups together. So command G with them all selected and just call this one. Now I'll make a copy of that layer by pressing command J. Using my transform tool, I can pull it on over. And I think what I want to do here is have these be a little bit staggered. So maybe it's hitting right there. So we get this fun zigzag going on in between. So I'll press enter to set the transformation. And I want to make a duplicate of this guy right here to go ahead and bring that pattern down. So I've opened up my folder. I'm going to make a copy of that one, use my transform tool, and bring it on down. Awesome. And now, same thing. I'll select both of these groups, make a copy, Command-J, and using my transform tool, Command-T, 
I'll just pull it on over and continue that zigzag pattern that's happening back and forth. Press enter to set. And if your computer starts getting bogged down and this is taking a long time to move things around and start transforming, we can go ahead and merge these together. Normally I don't like merging until I'm absolutely certain that that's the composition I want, but in this case I'm pretty set on it. And the difference between grouping and merging is that when you group, you have all of these individual elements that are still editable on their own. But when you merge something together like this, I'll select it all and do Command E to merge. All of a sudden, this is one flattened piece. So I can no longer isolate this dark green away from the lighter blue because it's been flattened into one piece. So in this scenario, I'm gonna zoom back out. It's fine because I know that this is the composition I want, but if you wanna have more flexibility in variables, then use groups, not merging. But for me, I know that this is the composition I want, so I'm going to go ahead and select everything and Command E, merge it together. So now everything is on one layer. Again, you can no longer edit these individual pieces, but I know I like this composition, so I'm just going to roll with it. So I'll make a copy of this layer, Command J, and then using my transform tool, I'll drag it on over and find a good spot for it and press enter. And now I'm going to select both of my layers, holding down shift and then merge them together by using command E. Awesome. I'm really liking this pattern. Let me zoom out a bit. Cool. I'm loving the way this looks. And here we have our first geometric pattern. You know, we essentially made this thing just by duplicating shapes over and over again and keeping them on a pretty tight grid. So pretty easy. And before I forget, let's go ahead and save. So file, save as, and I'm going to call this geometric triangle and save it as a Photoshop file and press save. Cool. Let's go ahead and learn how to do another one with the circles. All right, I'm gonna start the same way, file, New. The settings are the exact same, 10,000 by 10,000 at 300 ppi. Press create. So now I'm going to click the asterisk, the pink dot, and the red dot, and go ahead and pull them over. I was holding down shift to get them all at once. I have a pattern and color palette in mind for this one already, so I'm just going to go ahead and dive in and see if whatever is in my brain looks good um, in Photoshop. So first things first, I want this background to kind of be a peachy color, not white. And to do that, I'm just going to go over here to my paint bucket tool. You can also get that by pressing G and double clicking my foreground color. I want to find something that feels nice and peachy and a little bit pastel. So I'll click OK. And now with my paint bucket tool selected, I'm just going to go ahead and click anywhere on the background. Cool. This will be my background color. Next up, I'm going to zoom in a little bit and make some slight color adjustments. I want this pink circle to be really vibrant. So I'm going to make sure that layer is selected and do Command U. And I'm gonna bump up that saturation to be pretty heavy. I'll make it a little bit darker. Perfect, that's what I'm going for. And now I want this red to feel a little bit more like coral. So with that layer selected, I'm going to do Command U and bring that hue, whoops, wrong way, to the right side. Yeah, I really like that more tangerine feel to it. And I mentioned that I wanted to make this asterisk white, and I think that white is gonna look really nice against this pastel background. The first thing I'll do is Command U and bring down the saturation to absolutely nothing. Press OK. And now we'll use my levels to finish this up to make it more white and less gray. So to get to my levels, I'll do Command L, you can also get there by going to Image, Adjustments, Levels. And I'm going to toggle from the far right and bring it up pretty high until it is bright white. Perfect, and press OK. So I've got my three elements exactly the way I want them, um, colorized to perfection against that kind of pastel pink background. And now it's time to lay them out into a cool composition. So what I wanna do is have the tangerine circle overlapping the pink one, and then have that asterisk overlapping the tangerine. And remember, to get that asterisk overlapping everything else, just click it and drag it to the top of the stack on the layers palette. And I'm gonna use my transform to make it a little bit smaller. And that feels like a pretty good placement, so I'm going to press enter to set the transformation. Time to zoom out a bit. Whoa, too far. 
Cool. And again, if you want that flexibility, you should group them. And what I mean by flexibility is if you want to be able to move these things around individually later, you should group. But for me, I'm going to go ahead and merge them all together because I know I like this composition. So now I've got my little grouping. I'm going to put it perfectly in the center. Cool. And I'm just going to go for it. So I'm going to make a copy of that layer, Command J, pull it on over to the left. I'm going to do a horizontal stack this time instead of vertical, just to switch it up. So Command J, pull it over. And remember, Photoshop tells you exactly how much room is in between those two. So I know it's identical, so it's going to be a perfect grid. And same thing. Make some copies, pull it on over, and rinse and repeat. Now I'm going to select all these guys together, holding down Shift, and merge them by pressing Command E. Now I'll make a copy of that layer, Command J, pull it on down, move it over, and now we have a gap over here. So what I'm going to do is using my marquee tool, I'm going to select this guy, make a copy, and pull him on over. Perfect. Now we can go ahead and put those two back together. So selected them both and Command E to merge. All right, now it's just a matter of duplicating these layers into a pretty cool composition. So Command J, and I'm just gonna be eyeballing this into something that feels like a nice gridded spacing. And Photoshop is still there to help me out with those pink gridded lines. Cool, and there's my final pattern. So I'm gonna go ahead and select all of these guys together, press Command E to merge them, and do a little zoom out to see how it looks. So again, this is one thing I really like about creating these hand-done elements. You see a lot of texture within the brush strokes. These circles themselves aren't perfect. You can tell they were painted directly by hand. So it's a really nice juxtaposition between these hand-done imperfect elements and then this perfectly structured gridded pattern. This is essentially what modern and on-trend pattern making is all about. A lot of exploration and play and that combination of something that's hand done or handcrafted mixed with a modern digital touch.